There's this endless debate, should you use Blazor or JavaScript? Well, why not both? In this video, I'll show you how combining them will give you the best of both worlds. Hey friends, Patrick here. And as you can see, what I've got here is a Blazor server application and I wanna focus only on the counter page. This is pretty much the easiest example that we can use. And for instance, let's say we want to display also the current count into the console, right? First thing that might come into your mind is, well, using console right line. So there it is, console right line, current count is current count. We can uh, run our application, there it is. And when I now hit click me, well, it is a Blazor server app, right? I don't see it here in the console, but I see the result in the terminal. Now, what if I wanna still see this in the console? This, this is one reason maybe to use JavaScript here in this example, but of course there can be anything you want to use with JavaScript. So I would like to use the console lock function of JavaScript for that. Pretty simple actually, we inject the IJS runtime interface and we also call this JS for instance. And then here, what we can do, we simply say JS, and then we've got two methods, invoke async and invoke void async. The invoke void async would mean that we do not return anything. And invoke async means that we want to return, as you can see here, a T value. But in this case now, we can use invoke void async. We can, in fact, also make all that asynchronous. So we call await JS invoke async and now here we can already use all the built-in javascript methods right you could use an alert for instance or as i said the console lock and as you can see now the second parameter would be an, an object for instance so in this case it's simply the current count and i don't know why we have these exciting colors here but anyways let's just try it that way and now when i restart the app again and I hit click me, we see this is the current count, right? Of course, we can also use the complete text here. Just copy and paste it, restart the application. And now we have the result also in the console. But this is now only a built-in JavaScript function. What if you want to use a script of your own? Well, I think the best way to do that is you just create another file in your www root folder. First, create a new folder, JS, and here then, in fact, a new item, my scripts JS, for instance. There it is. And now, of course, we have to also add this in our app razor. So here you can also see the Blazor script, but now we want our own JavaScript stuff. So this would be JS for the folder and then my scripts JS. And here now I add a function. Let's just say async function log for instance. And here, this is just our text we want to log. And then here we write console log and then simply the text like that. All right, so this is our JavaScript part back to the counter. And now here, what we can do is we call lock again with this text. And now let's just change that. So we see the difference using our scripts, count is and so on. Save everything, run this and we hit click me again and this works like a charm right so using our script count is four now this is really a simple thing right displaying or logging a scalar value but what if you want to display a an object, right? A complete object with all its properties. Maybe you're coming from Angular, React, whatever, and then you see you're right in Blazor, it's not really possible to do this, to lock the complete object, and I get all the properties in the console of the browser automatically. Well, there's one solution. You could use the JSON serializer in .NET to display this then in the terminal, for instance, or you also do it like that. You just inject the JS runtime and then you can just lock the object. Let's use a quick example here. And I would really like to know from you guys, do you have a similar problem here? For instance, you want to lock a complete object, don't want to use the JSON serializer, don't want to see it in the terminal, stuff like that. What is 
your use case for using the JavaScript runtime would be, would be really interesting to see that in the comments. So please guys, write it down in the comments. Thank you very much for that. But now for our example, let's just say we have a class here, which is a player, of course. And then we have a string name, Goku by default, and we have a level like that. I know here, all right, so what did I do here? Just so you know, we have the console right line example, no string interpolation, nothing like that, just the object. And same thing here for JavaScript, we use our console log function in the end, also with the object, we restart the application, hit click me, and here we see Goku with level 9000 and one. And in the terminal, we see Blazor Server JavaScript example components pages counter player. So that's not really what we want, right? Again, you can of course use the JSON serializer to just serialize the object and then display this thing. This would also work, but I think maybe sometimes you want it that way. And for that, this is pretty neat. And you just, in essence, implement it once, maybe using another service, another component, whatever it is, and then you can use this. All right, but this now is the way Blazor to JavaScript or Blazor calling JavaScript functions. Now there's also the other way around. Maybe this use case is rather rare, let's say it's not that often the case that you need it. But if you do, please tell me that as well in the comments it would be really interesting. And how would you do that? Well, the first thing is you can actually only call functions that are static. And it's really a complicated way to do this because in this example, I would just say, this is now static void function. And here now we also say this thing is static. And then we have another function, private function, let's say private void, let's call this trigger counter. And this trigger counter method then calls a JavaScript function and the JavaScript function then calls the increment count function, all right? So here now we say trigger counter. We also remove this here. And now to make this work, we need this attribute here, JS invocable. As you can see here, identifies a dot method as allowing invocation from JavaScript code. Any method marked with this attribute may receive arbitrary parameter values from untrusted callers. All inputs should be validated carefully. Yeah, so be careful when you're using this. But in the end, this just means that, but well, you can of course give this thing any kind of attributes, whatever you like. So let's test that. All right, and then here we are again calling a JavaScript method and then this JavaScript method will call the other c -sharp method. I know, interesting way, but this is just for this example. Maybe you have, I don't know, any kind of library that needs to call a JavaScript function. And in this case, this would make more sense, I guess. But now for here, for this example, we can make this of course also asynchronous. We call a JS invoke void async again, and we will have another method called increment counter in a sec. And this thing then again, will call this stuff. So let me remove the rest. And then here now, let's create a function, an async function actually, call this now increment counter. And in here now, so that we see that we're coming from JavaScript, right? And we now call dot net. This is the syntax that we need. Invoke method async. And now we need the current assembly or the assembly that where we find the C sharp method. In our case, that would be the name of the project. So Blazor server JavaScript example. If you don't know how to check this, right click the project, go to the properties. And then you scroll a little bit further down and here, as you can see, assembly name, Microsoft build project name. This is in essence the variable. And in our case, this would be again, Blazor server JavaScript example. Just so you know, copy and paste this thing. And then again, the method that we wanna call is the increment count method like that. And then here you could add some parameters, whatever you need. And then we run this. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. Click me from JavaScript. And as you can see, the counter is incremented.
Now, the thing is incorporating JavaScript and Blazor is great, but what's the best architecture to bring everything together? Click on this video here to find out.